So lesson 5.7, solving logarithmic and exponential equations. Okay, so what we do is basically this whole lesson is just example after example. So let's look at this one here. So we got log 3x equals 2. So what we can do is we can write it in ex exponent form. So 3 to the 2 equals x. Well, that's easy. 9 equals x, right? So one of the things to try to remember here is always, always, always look to try to change them into exponential because then it makes it easier. All right, let's do the next one here. 2 log x 64 equals 3. Change it to exponent form. So x to the 3 equals 64. Okay. Well, that's to do that, we take the cube root of both sides, and the cube root of 64 is 4. So this one, right, x equals 4. Uh, over 3 here, log 5, six, uh, log 5, 625 equals x. Well, that's 5 to the x equals 625. Now, remember, try to find same base. So 625 can change to 5 to the 4. Oh, look, we have same base, so grab the exponents, right, the exponents up here, and you can see that x equals 4. All right, we'll go down to 4 here. Uh, log 2, 3, log 2x equals log 2, 12. Okay, they're all 2s, which is nice. So what we can do is, hey, look at this. Oh, yeah, that's an addition. We can use our log rules, and we can combine them. Oh, yeah, 3 times x is 3x. Now, log 2, 3x equals log 2, 12. Here's the interesting thing. In this case, they're both log 2s. So change them to 3x. Oh, sorry, you can just look at, actually, 3x equals 12 since they're the same logs. So 3x equals 12, x equals 4. So if they're the same log like that, you can just grab whatever's left over here and solve for it. Uh, five, log six, the absolute value of x equals two. Change that to exponential. So six to the two equals the root of x, uh, sorry, absolute value of x. Well, six squared is 36. Now, what can you get when you take the absolute value of it to get 36? Well, that's both positive and negative 36, right? Because remember, negative 36 is positive 36, and positive 36 is positive 36. Just got to remember the rules for absolute value. All right, go oh, down the bottom there is 6. So now you get a question like this. This is kind of neat. So 6 is 9, and log of 2 to the 8 is up the top there, right, equals x. Okay, well, let's deal with this log 2, 8 first. We're going to just deal with that piece of it. So log 2, 8 over here on the right equals x. Change it to exponent form. So 2 to the x equals 8. Uh, change the 8 to a common base. So we got 2 and 2. So we find out x equals 3. Okay, so we know right now that that whole thing, 3, can go for this whole top part up here, all the way up here, all this stuff. So we end up with 9 to the 3 equals x. Awesome. And then we just look at, okay, 9, nine cubed is 729, so x equals x. So in this case, when you have a log up the top there, do all that stuff first, then take the value and do the rest of it. Okay, flip the page. So uh, question 7. Same thing again. We got log 6, and oh, we got all this stuff here. Well, let's deal with that first. So we go over here. We got log 2, 64 equals x. 2 to the x equals 64. Find your common base. So 2 to the x equals 2 to the 6. So x equals 6. Now, we can take that 6 and plug it in for all of this log 2, 64. So now we get log 6 of 6 equals x. Okay, change it. So 6, of, six to the x equals 6 to the 1. Well, what does x happen to be? That's 1. Oh, so that's interesting. So what that is is that shows us a rule that we can also use. The rule is if you have log x to the x, it's equal to 1. So for instance, if it was log 7 and 7, it equals 1. If it was log 5 and 5, it equals 1. Right? x has to be greater than 0. It can't be negative. You can't do like log negative 2, negative 2. It will not work. And it can't be equal to 1. So you can't do log 1 and 1 equals to 1. And there's a proof for that, but you don't need to worry about that. You just have to understand that, hey, x cannot be equal to 1. All right. Let's go down to 8 here. So what we're going to do now with 8 is we're going to get a little more complex. So we have log 2, x minus 4, minus log 2, x plus 1 equals 3. Okay, well, that's subtract. So that's our division rule. Hey, awesome. So we go log 2, x minus 4, x plus 1 over there. Then what we do is we can take the whole thing and change it to exponent form. Yep, 2 to the 3 equals x minus 4, x plus 1. Well, 2 to the 3 is 8, and 8 technically is over 1. Well, hey proportion. We can solve this. We just have to cross multiply. So x times x plus 1 right here and 1 times x minus 4. All right? Distribute the x right here. Uh, sorry, distribute the 8. Right? You're going to distribute those two things like that. And then you end up with 8x plus 8 equals x plus 4. We do the math and we end up with x equals negative 12 over 7. Awesome. You're done, right? Well, no. You have to remember. Oh, way back up here. x has to be greater than zero. So we have x as a negative answer. So no solution since we cannot take the log of a negative number. So you can do the math, but then your final result is no solution. All right, last page. 
Example number nine. So solve for x. Give your answers to three decimal places. Okay. Oh, look at this. Three to the x equals 12. Ah, oh, can't solve that. They're different bases. But what we can do is we can log both sides. So if we log both sides, basically you put a log in front of the 3x, you put a log in front of the 12. You log both sides. Then, okay, what's our rules of logs? What do we do with this x up here as the exponent? Well, you bring it and put it in the front. Oh, okay, that works. We're getting there. Then you can isolate x. Get x by itself. Well, to do that, you divide this side by log of 3, so you divide this side by log of 3. Now, interesting thing is they both have base 10, so you can actually just grab your calculator, bang, and put in the answer. Now, there's another way to do it. If you have 3x equals 12, you can change it to a log format, log 3, 12 equals x, and then use the change of base, right? The 12 is here, so it goes to the top, the 3 is the bottom, uh, sorry, 3 is over here, goes to the bottom, and if you look, both of those are exactly the same, you can do it that way also. Okay, question 10, solve for x. Oh boy, look at this, 4 to the x equals 3, uh, to the 2x minus 1. Well, what you do is you log both sides. Throw a log in front of both each, and then start doing your rules. Okay, what do we do with the x? Yeah, we bring it down in front. What do we do with the 2x minus 1? Yeah, we bring it down in the front. Now, you got to be careful of those brackets. I would put that in brackets because you'll forget to distribute the log 3 to both of those pieces. Common mistake is only to do it to 1. Okay, so this x log 4 stays the same, but we can distribute the 2x times log 3 minus log 3. Okay, so that we got down to here, well, what do we do? Well, if you're going to solve this for x, you've got to get the x's on the same side. So this one already has the x on the left-hand side, so let's move all of this positive over to the other side. So if we move this to the, over the other side, it becomes negative. Okay, so we're left with just negative log 3 on this side. Then what we do is we look for a GCF, and the GCF in this case is x. Let's take out an x. Okay, there it is. We take out an x, we're left with log 4 minus 2 log 3. Oh, okay. And that equals that. Now, how do you get rid of all of this multiplication here? Well, you divide both sides by it. So all of this divided here, divided here. So x equals negative log 3 divided by all of this. Now, can you put that into your calculator? Of course you can, because those are all base 10. You can just plug it into your calculator, make sure you're careful of the brackets, because you want to divide by all of this, and then you can get your answer. Okay? Do another one. And they're just you can see they're just getting more complicated, but the pattern is still the same. So in this case, we have a 5 as our base and a 2 and a 3. And that doesn't work. Let's log both sides. So chuck a log in front of this one, chuck a log in front of this one. Okay, there's 3 plus x. It's an exponent, so it comes to the front based on our log rules. Uh, this right here, if you notice, is multiplication. So you have to separate that into the two addition pieces. This 2x minus 1 is only the exponent for the 3. It's not the exponent for the 2. So you've got to be careful of that. So we split them by addition. Okay, what do we do here? We distribute the 3 and the log 5, so 3 log 5, x log 5. Here, we have our log 2. What do we do with this 2x minus 1? We bring it to the front, right? And then we're going to, you can see, we can distribute it again. Wow, a lot of work on here. So 3 log 5 plus 2 log 5 equals log 2 plus, look at here, distribute. 2x times log 3 is 2x log 3. Negative 1 times log 3 is negative log 3. Wow. Now, is there anything we can combine? No. Okay, what are we going to do then? You want to isolate x. You want to get x by itself. So this x log 5 is already over here. Well, how do we get rid of this positive log 5, or sorry, this positive 3 log 5? You move it to the other side. Look over here. There's a 2x log 3. How do we get it to the other side? We subtract it. So now if you look, we have the x's on one side, and we have all the other stuff on the right-hand side. So then what we can do is then we can take out our GCF of x. So we take out x, we're left with log 5 minus 2 log 3, and all of this. Well, how do you get rid of this all again? This log 5 minus 2 log 3, you divide both sides by that. So you get this massive, massive log equal to x. But again, you have your calculator, you can put that into your calculator, make sure you're watching your brackets, and you end up with x equals 8.904. So it's really not that difficult. What you got to remember is you have to remember your logarithmic rules. And you really have to be careful as you're going through this that you do step by step by step. And you'll find you end up with a lot of steps that you could go wrong in a lot of spots. So just be very careful when you do those ones.